Hey, it's Tanner here. I uh, just had a friend's house. They have a doorbell camera that lost power. So I'm going to show you guys a couple cool tricks on how to get power back to your doorbell. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is find the chime box and see if there's an outlet or a power source next to it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just pop this off and see if I can find two wires behind there. If there's two wires, then it's really easy to find the doorbell wire and run that to an outlet. So I'm gonna pop this off and we'll take a look at what's behind here. So it looks like the transformer is actually right behind the chime box. This is pretty common. Depending on the builder and where you're at in the United States, sometimes it's right behind the chime box, sometimes this is in an attic or a crawl space or a garage. It can be kind of hard to find this. Now, a way to restore power, you can just replace this thing and it'll get power back to your doorbell. It is high voltage though, so if you do replace that, make sure you flip the breaker off. We're actually not going to replace this, we're going to just run it to an outlet. Um, so we're not going to mess with the high voltage, we're going to keep everything low voltage, easy and simple. What I'm going to do is drill a small hole at the top and then a small hole down by the outlet. I'm gonna drop a chain down so we can pull a, a new wire up through there. So it's behind the wall, it's nice and neat. They won't see any wire, make it look professional. So I'm gonna start off by drilling this hole up here on the top. Actually, before I do that, I gotta find out what side the stud is on. So studs on the left. So I just wanna make sure I'm over on this side. I'm just gonna go right here. On the outside of the box, just drill a small little hole. Just like that. One down here at the bottom. So I like to take the plate off so that when I do my hole, I'll be able to cover it all up with the plate. So again, I'm just gonna double check. I know that this is the hollow side, but just wanna double check. So see how it goes all the way in? It means it's hollow. So I'm just gonna drill my hole, bottom corner on the outside of the box. Okay, so I got my two holes drilled at the top and at the bottom. Now what I'm gonna use to fish my wire through is this ball chain and then this little magnet, wet noodle, whatever you wanna call it, and see how it sticks. I'm gonna drop this down the corner here, in the little hole that I made. Sometimes it kinda of catches on the drywall so you have to push it down at first. Okay, so got my my chain down the wall. Now a lot of times I use a little screwdriver. This time I'm gonna use a pen just to make it so my chain doesn't fall down through. And then just get this little magnet and and then you just kind of wiggle it around. Get it right. So you catch your chain just like that. So now what we're gonna do is just tape our wire on. This is just 18 gauge wire. It's a leftover wire we had laying around. So what we're gonna do is just tape this on and pull it up through. And now that I have the wire at the bottom, I'm gonna just start pulling this up through. And as soon as I get it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kink it a couple of times so my wire doesn't just fall back down through the wall. I've done that way too many times and so I've learned just make a nice little kink so my wire doesn't fall back through. There's nothing more frustrating than doing a job twice. I'm just gonna cut this. Now it's pretty simple. These two wires, we're gonna take them out. We're gonna untwist them and we're gonna splice them with this wire and then we'll just plug it in once we get all that done. So I'm gonna strip this back A little string. I like to strip this about half an inch. So now I'm just gonna unscrew this and this other wire and we're gonna splice them together. You can choose what colors you want to do, whatever makes the most sense. I'm gonna do this blue and the black I'm gonna twist together. the white with this red, I'm gonna to twist together. 
Now I've got these little bean clip, dolphin clips that I'm going to put on. Now these extra wires, they're not being used, so we're just going to tuck that back. All I want is the ones that we're using, so just like that. Okay, so I have these orange wire nuts that I'm going to use to protect the wires. So these are really easy, they just screw on over the top. And just do one at a time. And just twist it on. And I'm going to twist the other side on. Boom. Just like that. Super easy. So just a couple safety tricks. When you're when you have this metal chain, this is an exposed outlet, so make sure that this metal chain doesn't fling back in there. It can be a safety hazard. If you're nervous about it, you can always flip the breaker. All the work that I'm doing is on the outside of the box, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm not gonna flip the breaker, but just keep that in mind. I'm gonna stuff all this slack back up in here. What we're gonna do is just strip it back and then put our transformer on. And the cool thing about these strippers is they have different the gauges on there. So I know that this is 18 gauge wire. So it's nice, I just put it in the little 18 slot and then I can just close all the way and then just drag it off. It makes it nice because then you don't have to worry about breaking your wire. And then what I like to do is just bend it into a little half like horseshoe shape. I get my little flathead, open the screws up. We're gonna put the black on the negative and I like the little horseshoe flathead trick. So I use my left index finger and the, the flathead and I'm just gonna pinch it closed. So it makes it super easy. It helps you can like push the wire around the screw. And then you just pinch it closed. Makes it nice and neat. And then just cinch it down. Now I'm gonna tuck the slack back up. Just like that. I'm gonna put this outlet plate back on. It's nice and clean, you don't see any wire. And plug it in. Now, if we did our job right, we could go back outside and make sure that that doorbell's powered on and then we'll clean up the chime box, put that back on. Okay, cool, came back outside, the doorbell's getting power. Uh, we got that working. So that was just one way to show you guys how to restore power to your doorbell. Every home is different. Every builder is different. So if you have any questions, if things weren't very clear on this video, please check out one of my other videos. Uh, I'm trying to do a bunch um, of different homes, different areas throughout the country. So that way you guys can check out uh, different videos and hopefully find one that's similar to your home.